These are dark times, there is no denying. The sound of the horn is so terrifying that you will see mankind will be in a drunken state, but in reality they won't be drunk. I guess that's the end of them. No, it is just the beginning. Will the angel of death come to a person who obeys Allah, who obeys the messenger of Allah, who lives a life of obedience, fasting, praying, elevating the kalima, La ilaha illallah, enjoining what's good, forbidding what's evil. Will the angel of death come to this person with the 12 eyes, black of face, fire leaping out from his mouth, coming out from his nose, with a fourth iron rod, with 500 angels behind it, with whips and embers made out of fire? The answer? Never, 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 never. It will come in the most beautiful of With 500 angels behind it, with white, bright, shiny feet. And each angel will carry with them a bunch of flowers. And each bunch will consist of 20 different colors and each color will give out a different smell and the angel of death will say assalamu alaikum O friend of Allah come out come out to the forgiveness and the pleasure of Allah Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, was salatu was salam ala Sayyid al Habib al Mursalina Muhammad, wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in, wa man tabi'ahum bi ahsanin ila yawmiddin, amma ba'a. Dear respected brothers, sisters, ulama, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. After praising Allah the Almighty and sending salutations on Nabi Kareem Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, I begin by thanking UKIM Dawa Center for giving me this opportunity to convey the message of Allah and His Messenger Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. As I pray to the Almighty Allah, that Allah accepts my efforts in delivering this message. As I pray to the Almighty Allah, that Allah accepts your efforts in listening to this message. In this world, my brothers and my sisters, there are two types of people. Those who Allah the Almighty will honor at the time of death and those who Allah will disgrace at the time of death. And those who Allah will honor at the time of death are those people who obey Allah. And those who Allah will disgrace are the likes of the drug dealers, the pimps, the wine dealers, the interest dealers, the druggies, the junkies, the crackheads, the smackheads. And wallahi by Allah, if they remain upon this, then it is feared that Allah will indeed disgrace these people at the time of death. Likewise, you have guys who are fresh off the boat who are going around and giving their numbers to women, young women and women are falling in the traps of these individuals. 
How? Because this guy who is fresh off the boat, he drops some Bollywood lines and this woman falls in the trap. Time passes. The storyline of Romeo and Juliet begins. Weeks down the line, this Romeo turns out to be the devil. How? Because he turns out to be the pimp. And he begins to pimp out this Juliet of his. Hundreds of women are falling in the traps of these individuals. Hundreds. Women are falling in the traps of these individuals. Numbers are getting exchanged. Photographs are getting exchanged. Nude. Nude photos are getting exchanged. And without them even knowing it, it's on some website on the internet. And this is happening in Birmingham. This is happening in Birmingham. And just a few months back, the same incident took place. Numbers were exchanged. Numbers were exchanged. And you know what took place? This guy, he made this girl run away from home. Run away from home, and once she ran, once she ran away from home, he stopped pimping her out. And this message is for the pimp. Listen to me very carefully, and I pray to Allah that my message reaches you. This is someone's mother. This is someone's daughter. This is someone's sister. This is someone's niece. This is a Muslim and you are pimping out a Muslim fear Allah fear Allah and I pray to Allah that Allah guides you and if Allah does not guide you then I pray to Allah that Allah gives you a dog's death why those parents they think she's just going to college or university but how do they know that there's a pimp on the street who's pimping out her? And what else do you find? Never mind in Small Heath, Sparkbrook, Spark Hill, Handsworth, Lozals. I'm talking about Alam Rock. You have guys, the age of 16, the age of 17, the age of 18 who are walking with the attitude who are walking with a limp and by Allah when the Antichrist comes he will also walk with the limp and the Muslim youth are following the Sunnah of the Antichrist look at the state look at the states of the kids today the funny haircuts, the funny clothing, the fake gold rings, the fake Machino, Armani, Versace trousers, and they are walking around with their chest out, out of pride. But bear in mind that the Prophet wasallam said that anybody who possesses an atom of a pride Allah will throw him in the fire of hell. Why? Because the messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that Allah says majestic pride is my garment, loftiness, bigness. This is my role. And if anybody wants to challenge me, then I won't look at this person who he is. I will throw him in the fire of hell. But in spite of this, you have the young youth. Who are looking for role models? Who are looking for role models? And who do they find? Who do they find? People like Tupac, Biggie, Jay Z. 
this is their own words. The very people who insult Allah, who insult the Messenger of Allah, and we are following the Sunnah of Biggie, of Tupac. The best example that you will ever find is none other than Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And same goes for the women. What do you find? What do we find? A woman who wakes up in the morning with the intention of sinning and then she gets up out of her bed and she takes a GHD or Babylon straightener out. and then she straightens her hair so she gets that shine and then she puts on her fake lashes her fake nails and then she puts on a Bobby Brown, Chanel, Clinique makeup on, the MAC eyeliner. And then she puts on a tight clothing and a high heels. And then she steps out of the house and she puts some Gucci perfume on. And then she does that walk on the street. And when she is told, fear Allah, fear Allah, you know what she says? You know what she says? She says you live once, you die once. You are gonna go into your grave. I am gonna go in my grave. Oh Morbi, go home. Listen to me, you evil woman. The reality is, and you will find out the reality. When, if Allah does not grip you for your evil tongue in this world, then Allah will grip you in the hereafter. And when you remember and just bear this in mind, then when Allah grips you in the hereafter, and when you will be naked, barefooted, and you'll be dragged from your head, face down and thrown in, in the fire of hand, at that time you will recognize how dangerous your statement was. And the women, they are also looking for role models. Role models. And who do they find? Who do they find? Women like Shilpa Shetty, or Pretty Zinta, or J Lo, or Beyonce. Devil worshippers! And you are looking for examples in their lives when you have the best women that ever walked on the face of this earth, the wife of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And by Allah, one moment of their life is better than the entire actions of their loved lives. And we and the women are looking for examples in Bollywood films. They're looking for role models. Allahu Akbar. And if these people remain upon this, if these people remain upon this, then it is feared that Allah will indeed disgrace them at the time of death. And those who Allah will honor are those people who live a life of obedience, who live a life Enjoying what is good and forbidding what is evil. Living a life praying, fasting, elevating the kalima la ilaha illallah is hope for these types of people. Allah will honor them at the time of death. Indeed, Allah will honor them. The hadith recorded by Imam al Bukhari and Imam Muslim in the Sahih on the authority of Ubadah bin Samit radiallahu anhu. He says, that the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Whomsoever loves to meet Allah, Allah loves to meet him. And whomsoever dislikes to meet Allah, Allah dislikes to meet him. And this is why you will have people who are ready to die for Allah. People 
when they stand in front of the Almighty Allah in Salah, they don't care. They will stand all through the night worshipping. They will stand all through the night worshipping Allah. Allah has to when a person is about to get executed, he doesn't care. Because why? Because he knows he's going to meet the Almighty Allah. He knows his return is to the Almighty Allah. And when I received this story from Abu Yahya, Wallahi, he shocked me. He writes that in prison days, when I was in prison, Years had passed that there was no practice of execution. And all of a sudden, the practice of executioning came into place. And the word quickly circulated around the prison that a person is going to get executed. Time passes. Abu Yahya says, I was prevented from going out to the courtyard for exercise. And he said at that time, the word circulated around the prison that an execution will take place. And the one to be executed was none other than my Quran teacher, as he says. A pious brother who obeyed Allah, whose recitation was such that it will melt the stones. A practicing brother. He says, the gods took him. They covered his head so he could not see anyone. And then took him to the executioner's chamber. They put him face down, face down on the ground. So he says a doctor came in. He listened to his heart rate to find out the positioning of his heart. And at that time, he said he made three marks, three marks on his back to find out the positioning of his heart as this is where the executioner is to shoot. He says, the executioner walks in, covered from head to toe, head to toe. Hussein, he was also covered and he was made to lie flat, face down. The executioner walks in, he takes out his piece, he puts it towards the marking and he lets off three shots. All three shots missed it. And at that time, at that time, Hussein screamed and he said, Ya Sabir, why are you torturing me? Why are you torturing me? I asked, do you know who Sabir was? the execution. How did Hussein know that he was the executioner? When he was covered from head to toe and the executioner was covered head to toe. How did he know? And he says, the gods at that time watching this, they looked at Sabih. He says his hands begin to shake. Out of fear and he lets off three more shots and the soul of Hussein leaves the body. How truthful is the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Whomsoever loves to meet Allah, Allah loves to meet him. And whomsoever dislikes to meet Allah, Allah indeed dislikes to meet him. I asked, did he run away? Did he jump out the window? Did he commit suicide? No, he was ready to get executed. Why? Because he wanted to meet the Almighty Allah. 
Who else do we find? Who doesn't know of Ja'far? Ja'far radiallahu anhu was the companion of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The very companion. The very companion. They used to hold the flag of Islam on the battlefields. The enemy seeing this, they charge towards him and they strike him. They strike his arm off and the flag drops. Jafar didn't give up. He picked up with his left. He held the flag. The enemy seeing him, they head towards him. They charge towards him and they strike him. And take his and the take his other arm off. Did Jafar give up? No, he hugged the flag and he held the flag up high. And when the enemy is seeing this, they went towards him and they striked him again. And the soul of Jafar leaves the body. And when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, when he was informed of the death of Jafar. He says that I have been informed that Allah the Almighty, He has replaced the arms of Jafar with wings and is roaming around in Jannah with the angels. Who hasn't heard of Sa'ad? Radiallahu anhu, he was that companion of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That when he died, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that the throne of the Creator shook. The throne of the Creator shook. 70,000 angels descended to do his janazah and the gates of Jannah. And when a person is about to leave the world, Ibn Qayyim Alayhi Rahma writes, the two devils come to this person. One in the form of his mother and the other in the form of his father. The one in the form of his mother. He says, Oh my child, I love you. I was a Jew. That is the best of religion, so die as a Jew. On the other side, his father. He says that I was a Christian. That is the best of religions, so die as a Christian. The shaitan and his army will try their best to deviate a person at the time of death. He will either Try to make a person die upon kufr or die upon shirk. And when Allah orders the angel of death to bring this person, to bring a believer, Allah says, bring him to me. The narration says, the hadith of Tamim Udari states that the angel of death descends with 500 angels. I ask if a person who obeys Allah, who obeys the messenger of Allah, who lives a life of obedience, enjoining what is good, forbidding what is evil. I ask, would the angel of death come to this person, 12 eyes, black of face, fire leaping out from his mouth, coming out from his nose with a forked iron rod, with 500 angels behind him, with whips and embers made out of fire? Never. It will come in the most beautiful of form. The most beautiful of form. 500 angels with white, bright, shiny faces. With white, bright, shiny faces. And the angel of death, it will sit by his head. And then the rest of these angels, they will surround him. And each angel will place their hands on his limbs. And then the angel will put a cloth under his chin. And then he'll be shown the women of Jannah, 
the palaces of Jannah, the springs of Jannah, the fruits of Jannah, the delights of Jannah, his body, his soul will begin to jump out of excitement in his body. And at that time I ask, would the angel of death put an ember underneath his neck and say, come out to the fire of hell where there is scorching winds, scalding water, shadow of black smoke, no cool, no refreshing? No, he will say, Assalamu alaikum, O friend of Allah, come out. Come out to the mercy and the pleasure of Allah and the soul will be extracted. And how would he be extracted? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa gave an example. He says it's like a hair coming out of the flower. At that time, the body will thank the soul and the soul will thank the body. At that time. And then the angels, they will bring a coffin from Jannah. And they will bathe him, apply scent on him, and then they will wrap him with his coffin. And once they wrap him with his coffin, I ask, who will take charge? Who will take charge of this soul? The narration says that the angel Jibrail alayhi salam with 70,000 angels will descend and will take this soul. And on the dunya, these angels will honor it. How? They will form two rows starting from his house, ending at his grave. And they will ask Allah to forgive him. And they will beg Allah, oh Allah, forgive him. And when shaitan and his cronies see this, you know what will happen? The shaitan will begin to cry. And he will say, you fools. How did you let this believer escape? And when this is taking place, the narration says that the souls that is with the 70,000 angels and Jibra'il, they will take this soul to the first heaven. And when he's lifted off the ground, will the places curse him? Will the places say that good, rid good riddings? Oh Allah, you got rid of this disgusting, filthy soul? No. The narration says that the heavens and the earth, they will begin to cry. They will begin to cry. And they will, Allah will say, what makes you cry? And they will reply by saying, Oh Allah, when he passed us, he is to make you mention. And then the soul is taken. And every group of angel, angels that this soul passes, the angels will say, who is this pure soul? And the angels will reply by saying, it's the soul of so-and-so by calling him with the best of names. And when he reaches the first heaven, would the gates be closed for this person? Would he be said to him, never would you enter paradise until a camel enters the eye of a needle? No. The gates will be open. And once the gates are open, he will enter. And the best angels of the first heaven, they will escort him to the second heaven. And then the best angels of the second heaven, they will escort him to the third heaven. Then the best angels of the third heaven, they will escort him to the fourth heaven, to the fifth, to the sixth, to the seventh and finally when he reaches Allah's throne, he will fall into prostration. And then Allah will say, write his name in the early year. And then his soul 
will be taken back to the dunya. And when he's taken back towards the dunya, and when he arrives at the graveyard, the narration says that all four corners of the graveyard will praise him and will honor him and welcome him. And when he comes to the grave, would the grave say to him, your coming is evil. I'm displeased to meet you. Out of all those people that passed me, you were the one I hated the most. No. It will say, out of all those people that passed me, you, you were the one I loved the most. Today, today is the day you are inside me. I will show you how I will honor you. And the narration says that the grave will embrace him. And how would he embrace him? Would his bones interlace? No. The hadith of Rasulullah states that the grave will embrace him just as a mother embraces a child. And then his salah, his fasting, his recitation, his deeds will stand as barriers in his grave and the surrounding. And then the punishment, the punishment of the grave, he will try entering it. And every time he tries entering it, his deeds will come in a way and he will use it as a barrier. And then the angels Munkar and Akira will descend. They will descend with their eyes flashed like the flash of lightning, with their voices rumble like thunder, with their canine teeth look like the bull's horns, with they have a hammer with them so heavy that if every single person on the face of this earth got together and tried moving an inch, would they be able to move it? Would these angels descend for a soul of a believer? Never. Why? Because this is a dear soul. This is a soul that Allah is pleased with. The narration says, the beautiful angels, dark faces, blue eyes, they will descend in his grave. And they will say, tell us, who is your Lord? Who is your Lord? And what would he say? My Lord is Allah. Why? Because he had time for Allah. He had time for Allah. When he come time for worship, the Hajjat, night prayer, Ramadan, the five daily prayers, he was standing in front of the Almighty Allah, worshiping him. And the angel will pose the second question to him. And they will say, tell us, what is your deen? And what would he say? He will say, my deen is Islam. Because he was that person. When he come to Islam, he acted upon it. He was on half half. When he came into Islam, he followed it complete. He didn't bend no rules. He followed Islam complete. And the angels will say, tell us. Who is this man who was sent amongst you? Who was the man who was sent amongst you? Would he say Shilpa Shetty? J-Lo? Beyonce? What would he say? Would he say Tupac? Biggie? Naz? Buster Rhymes? No, he will say Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Why? Because when he came to Sunnah and acting upon the Sunnah of Muhammad وسلم, he was that person who acted upon the Sunnah. There was no beating the bush. He acted upon the Sunnah, whether it was by eating, whether it was by sleeping, whether it was by dealing with the non-Muslims, whether it was by living with society, whether it was by dealing with the neighbors, he acted upon the Sunnah. And when he acted upon the Sunnah, 
Indeed, this person would say, the man who was sent amongst us was none other than Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And then at that time, the angels would say, look above you. Look above you. And what would he see? The gates open towards Jannah. The gates open towards Jannah. And the angels will say that this is your abode because you were the obedient one. When it came time to worship, you were the obedient one. This is your abode. And then the angels will say, look beneath you. Look beneath you. And what would he see? He will see the fire of hell. And the angels will say, O pure soul, you were the obedient one. Allah has saved you from this. Allah the Almighty has saved you from this. And then a caller will call out and he will say, my servant has spoken the truth. Give him the beddings of Jannah. Give him the clothing of Jannah. And the gates of Jannah will be open for this person. The gates of Jannah will be open for this person. And if a person, if a person who lives a life of obedience, acting upon the Sunnah, acting upon Islam completely, then indeed Allah will honor this person at the time of death and he will live a life of luxury in his grave. The hadith recorded by Bayhaqi on the authority of Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu, what does he say? He says, the one occasion a group of companions, they were walking past the grave and they seen a tent and they moved the tent. And when they moved the tent, what did they see? They seen a grave. And what did they hear? They heard a recitation. They heard a recitation from the grave. The companions, they said, we, wait, we stopped there and we listened to the recitation. And someone was reciting Surah Mulk. And he says, after his recitation, we finished. And we went towards the Prophet Sallallahu We said to Muhammad, O oh Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, this strange thing happened today. This strange thing happened. Someone was reciting from the grave. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that if he was reciting, then this is the recitation, Surah Mulk, that will save a person from the punishment of the grave. He recited it in the dunya, and he's reciting it in his grave. And who hasn't heard of the great Mu'adh bin Jabal radiallahu anhu. That companion of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa he was on the battlefield. And when he's standing on the battlefield, the enemy strikes him with a spear and Mu'adh drops to the ground. And when Mu'az drops to the ground, what does he say? Abdurrahman ibn Awf, he says, the Mu'az was reciting something, or he was saying something, but we couldn't hear it. Then we made out what he was saying. And I said to Mu'az, oh Mu'az, is there anyone there? Mu'az replied by saying, I see something that you do not see. And what does he see? He says that Allah the Almighty has honored me. He has honored me. And how did he honor me? He says that I was patient at the death of my son. This is why Allah has honored me. And how Allah has honored me? He goes, my son has come to me and he said to me that the Prophet وسلم, the angels the martyrs the Sahaba they are all formed their lines ready to do your janazah why 
because this is the honor of a person who lives a life of obedience. Abdul Rahman says, soon after Mu'az drops, his head drops, he faints. He says, time passes. Time passes and he raises his hands and he's shaking hands with someone. The companions, they were there. They go, we didn't see anyone. It was like if he was shaking hands with an invisible person. And he was saying, welcome, welcome, welcome. And his hand drops. And the soul of Mu'az bin Jabal, radiallahu anhu, extracts. The last story, and I will conclude. 1929. The king of Iraq, he says that I had a dream. I had a dream with the two companions of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they have come to me. And they said to me that the water from the river Tigris is seeping through our graves. Help us. The king of the time. He says, I dug a place up between the grave and the river Tigris to ascertain the truth. And what happened? He goes, there was no sign of water. He says, so I dismissed the dream. He, go, he goes here, here again. He had the same dream over and over and over again. The same dream. That the two companions of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam are saying that take us out, take us, save us. The water from the river Tigris is seeping through our graves. He says, so at that time, I took mashwara with the people of Iraq, especially with the ulama. He says, so I gathered all of them. He says, I informed them about the story, about the dream I had. He says, when I informed them about the dream, he says, one of the scholars of that time, he got up and he said, that I also had the same dream. So he says, that it was agreed upon that the graves of these two companions will be dug up. He says a date was fixed. The date was fixed on a certain day that the graves of these two companions will be dug up. And if the water is seeping through, relocate them to a different place. He says that at that time, it was close to the season of Hajj. So the hujjaj of that time, when the news reached Mecca and Medina, he says at that time, he says these people requested us that delay it for a while because we want to attend as well. So after when he was delayed, he says the date came when we dug up the two graves. He goes, we dug up the two graves. 13 centuries for 13 centuries they were in their grave he says when we looked at their body they were completely intact without a scratch and this has happened only in 1929 and says we took the bodies out and we moved them next to Salman al-Farsi, next to his grave, a hole was dug. An eye specialist at that time, a non-Muslim of that time, he says, witnessing this, he says, I looked inside the two companions' eyes and he was an eye specialist. He says the glow that normally disappears within months of a person's death, this glow is still inside these two companions. The glow is still inside these two companions. 
And what was flowing on his lips a couple of seconds after? Ashhadu la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah. He accepted Islam. And many people who were there at that time accepted Islam. And the bodies were moved. And this narration that can be found in Janid Dida, page number 55, 58. And in Cyclopedia, if you just type in the name Abdullah ibn Jabir, you will see that this article will also be present there. And a person who lives a life of obedience, indeed Allah will honor him. Because Islam is not about gangsterness. No, it's about people going around, gunning people down. It's not about drug dealing. It's not about you thinking you're it. Islam is complete. Every single thing in the Quran, the Muslims shouldn't deny anything and they should accept it blindly. Why? Because this is the book that shook the world. And I pray to the Almighty Allah that Allah makes us from amongst those people who Allah honors. And Allah save us from the punishment of the grave.